In this video, let's try to use tag helpers to help us to create a HTML form. We're looking at the edit category page. On this page, we not only need to display the category information, but also need to be able to edit the category information. And for that, we will need a HTML form. The form tag specifies the method. Because we want to make a change, therefore we're going to use the post method. And for a normal form tag, it has a action attribute. So this is the place where we need to provide a URL. And this URL is something like this. So categories edit. What this means is that when the form is submitted, it will go to this particular URL to handle the submit form action. However, in the SPDLink core, there's an easier way to do this because it is always the action method who handles the request. Therefore, it's more intuitive to specify the controller and its actions separately as opposed to hard code a URL here in the action attribute. This is where we use Tech Helper. We have used Tech Helper to create navigation links. Here, we can still use Tech Helper to specify which controller it goes to. In this case, it's categories and then which action it will go to. In this case, it's added. Now here, we need to create the name field, the description field. We also need to display a submit button. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to use Bootstrap 5. We're going to use a row class along with a bottom margin. And within here, we can specify the field. And for now, we're going to have two columns. One is column, so this number two is the size. The margin bottom, number three, is also the size. So in column two, we're going to use a label. And this is where we show the label for the name field. And of course, we can just hard code the name here to specify the label for the name field. But we can also use a tag helper, a SP.NET Core tag helper, where we can say for which field under the model specified here, this label is for. Here you can see that there's IntelliSense and we can select the name field here. ASP.NET Core will look at the name field and will be able to generate the string for us when it renders the HTML. And we can provide a class. So we're going to say column form label. By the way, how to use Bootstrap classes is out of scope of this course. So you can check out the documentation of Bootstrap. Next, we're going to add the, the field column. And for this one, it's going to be slightly bigger. So we're going to use size number six. You can play with the size and determine what size is good for you. Here, we're going to use an input field. And the type is obviously text. And again, this field is for name. And we're going to have form control for the class name. So we completed the name field. We can actually give it a try and see how it looks like right now. So let's go to categories and let's add, click on the edit button. You can see the first field is displayed and let's press on F12 and check out the name field here. You can see with the tag helper that points to the name field, it generated an ID with name and name of the field is also name. So because we have the ID and the name here, so when the field is submitted to the controller action method, the model binding process that we talked before is going to be able to recognize to which property in the class this field needs to be bound to. So let's go back and continue to implement the next field, which is the description field. And for that, we can just copy and paste the name field. So here we only just need to change the field of the name. In this case is description for the label. And it's also description for input field. Now last but not least, we're going to have a submit button. And here we can also copy this row here and paste it. Now we want the button to be in the first column and the second column we can leave it as empty. So here we're going to have another input 
but this time it's going to be a submit button instead of a actual field for user to input information and it's going to be a button and it's going to be a primary button the value is the caption of the button and that's going to be safe because this is an added page okay let's run the application and check out the page again let's go to category and click on the second one which is bakery and we can see the name and description is properly rendered we can try the last one and it's also properly rendered okay in this lesson we have learned to use tag helpers to help us to create a html form and with the tag helper it can specify which controller and action method will handle the post request from the form and also we learn how to use asp4 tag helper to help us to specify the field name label and the field itself that's everything i want to cover in this video and i'll see you in the next one